Hello and welcome to another little challenge episode. What you're looking at here is a Manco mini bike. I believe it's a Manco given the style of the wheels and style of the frame, but I have no actual confirmation of that. I haven't had one of those yet. And all in all, it's pretty good. The forks have a little bit of a bend to them, but not bad enough that I'm gonna do anything about. And the plan here is to build it in one episode, only using the parts that I have on hand. So we're trying to keep this as quick and budget friendly as possible. I'd like by the end of this to be running, completed, ready to go. And the secondary goal is to only use parts I have on hand. I don't want to order anything because I hoard parts. So this is a bit of a parts dump. Whether you want to believe me or not, I paid $25 for it. I got it at the state auction. I was willing to go more on it, but nobody else bid. So I got it pretty cheap. And I'll even just show you here. So here's the invoice from the auction. It's a $24.59 bike frame. Yeah, you know, take that as you will. I'm super happy with that. That's actually the cheapest mini bike I've gotten that wasn't just straight free. So this is likely a three or four horse Tecumseh. Good engine, it spins over, it's got compression. I know nothing else about it. It looks to be points ignition, so that's great and probably not gonna work. But in any case, it's probably a good engine, but we can't build it in the time frame that I want since I don't have any hard parts for these. I only have service parts on hand. So to find a shroud for it is possible, just not in my time frame. So. We're gonna give it some starter fluid, just see what it does, and then take it off, put it on the shelf, and save it for later. I have a five horse flathead Briggs to go on here, and that engine's already been gone through, reseal, decarbon, all the things you do when you wanna refresh a flathead Briggs. We're gonna to try to keep the build as classic and period as possible. Paint's gonna take the longest, so we're gonna start there. Order of operation would be take it outside, put it on a stand, give it some starting fluid, see if it pops off, take this engine off, start prepping the frame for paint, paint the frame. The plug looks new. The valves look like shit. Does this, let's see if it even has oil in it. It has oil, okay. Good enough for me. It's gonna be wide open throttle since there's nothing to control it. But I'll just give it a little spritz of starting fluid and pull on that. I think it's gonna have no spark. So I'm not really worried about it, but we're gonna find out. Yeah, there's nothing going on. Okay. I can't do what I do with like the Briggs where I just put a more modern coil on it that has the electronic pickup. Like in this case, the points are the only option. And I have a bunch of parts for them, but I just don't like dealing with them. So on the shelf it goes. The bearings are, well that bearing, yeah, the bearings are very crunchy. The tires don't look too bad, despite being super old. They are Tenzing clone ones, but they do have the old diamond pattern on them. So they might actually be Fairly old. This is gonna and then get the hammer out. Oh, easy. Well, that bearing's falling apart entirely. The engine only has two bolts holding it in, and I guess they're not actually tight at all. Being that the axles weren't tight whatsoever. <laughs> Luckily, whoever had this, I'm guessing was probably the original family the whole time, because it hasn't been modified too much. Like painting is one thing, like cutting the frame, modifying it, that kind of stuff is what you'd expect when it changes hands. Like me, I get that. And then, ow, that hurt. Just dropped right on my leg. Get the tetanus. The rusty ass governor just dragged on my leg. Good thing my tetanus booster's up to date. Luckily the paint's pretty bad. So it comes off super easy. One issue is I'm trying to, you know, use only things I have on hand, and that includes stuff like paint. I've got a lot of cans, but a lot of which are empty, and, and a lot of which I only have one can of. I'm really limited with colors. I've got a ton of different variants of black and white, but very little actual color. So I've got these three. There's like a really ugly red, a bright silver, and like a dark graphite a gold, and like a copper sort of color. The issue is I only have these cans. So like this one's half empty, this one's pretty full, this one's like three quarter full, stuff like that. So being that I have the most of copper and I don't mind the color, I think I'm gonna do the frame in this and then do graphite and black accents. Joy, a rock 
uh, it was painting outside and then it started to rain and now we're just sitting here. So here's the engine. We're gonna go ahead and pull the carb and gas tank assembly off because we're not using this style. I did go ahead and take the side cover off to paint it. So that way it would match the, the graphite that I used for the accents of the bike. But in doing so, I had to take the sticker off. And I unfortunately don't have a new one that said five force. I only have one that just says like that stuff, which is fine, I'll throw that on there. And then I have a new one for the pull start assembly. Which This engine's a 95, so it already came with the electronic ignition style coil. Otherwise I would have converted to that. I'm gonna go ahead and get the clutch on. We're actually just gonna reuse the one that was on the Tecumseh because the clutches have a lot of material left. And the thing honestly looks pretty good aside from being painted pretty terribly. I noticed there's lots of runs and stuff, so I just did a quick sand on it just to smooth it out. But in doing so, I uncovered the engraving that says Comet. So if you know anything about clutches, at least the old school style ones like these, Comet is like the name. So that's pretty cool. And I'm looking at the condition of it, it looks like it's gonna work. So we just need to install it. Let's go and put a little anti-seize on this just to help out future me. I know I have cheapy, like $20 centrifugal clutches that are three quarter inch and also 35 chain like I need it to be. Those don't last long at all. So I really don't want to use it if I don't have to because they kind of suck. I haven't decided on which one I want to use yet, but I do have a couple clutch covers to use. This one's like specifically for Briggs and it would sit like that, which wouldn't look too bad, but we're gonna see how it looks in the frame because this one's also pretty pricey if I remember right. Whereas I, this one is like the cheapest one you can get and it also looks cheap. So we'll see which one looks best in the frame. I got this engine, I think it was from a tiller and it was $13. Again, I think I bought it at the same auction that this bike came from. I like put a little magnetic drain plug in. Like I went through all the, how is that already scratched? I just painted it. That's great, whatever. Okay, that gas gets trash. Okay. Fuck off. Go in your fucking head, you piece of shit. Go into your head, you fucker. Okay, down there you go. When I took the stock exhaust off, this stud broke. So I had to drill and retap it. And it threads again, but it's just not super nice. Like it's, it's kind of floppy where it really shouldn't be. So that means this lower one's gonna be doing most of the work. So I'm not super eager to use that. The only issue is I only have two options for exhaust. I have a nice pre-made one with actually nice welds. So that way you know I didn't make it. And I just tacked a performance muffler on the end there. I don't even know when I did that, but it is the right bolt pattern because it's for Briggs. The issue is that it's got a little bend in it, it's either going to be pointing straight at the tire or actually even probably hitting the fender or pointing up at the sky. I think the only other option is to do whatever size that is. I think it's three quarter NPT plumbing and then, you know, do a little like six inch section, an elbow, and then a little muffler on the end. And, you know, like the little cheapy $6 Arnold mufflers or whatever. I've showed this intake before, it's a Tecumseh one. The part number for the one I bought, which I don't think is an actual Tecumseh brand, I think it's a knockoff brand. The part number for this specific one I'm holding is 28416A. I'll link it below because I think the part number is a little different than that. I think that's an aftermarket production part number. But in any case, every single time I've done a Briggs that's been modified like this, I've used this intake because it just works. So the intake would go like that, carb would go right there and then exhaust would come out and away. I'll make a little heat shield so it doesn't melt stuff. So. It'd be approximately like that. And then part number for this carb is TF8A6C. If this one doesn't work, I'll just go to a regular lawnmower style carb. I don't want to, because I've done that or not already on one of these engines. So I want something a little bit different. I have both as options. I think the mechanical and fuel injection would just be cool though, that's all. Paint's done. It's pretty decent. I'm not super happy with it because the bright color shows all the imperfections. And when I was stripping the frame down, I found the original Manco sticker underneath the blue paint and it's actually legible. So you now have the model number and stuff. Okay. I think it looks pretty good together as far as the color combination goes. Funnily enough, the fenders and I think the brake lever and a couple other components were ones I previously owned and they went onto a different mini bike that I sold. And the person who bought it wrecked that one and I bought back what was still salvageable. They're still a little tweaked even, but they're gonna do the job. So that's all that matters. All I did with the wheels was I just cleaned them up. 
They had been painted silver in the past and not well. So I just scotch brighted the outer surfaces. You can tell where they even oversprayed. The bearings in these wheels are just normal 6201S or whatever they are, the really common ones. Here's one of the old bearings. The ones I bought had the little snap ring that clips in, that way they stay in place. But listen to this, like, they're just so notchy and garbage. This is actually the worst one, but even so, for how little those bearings cost in bulk, they were paid off by a different project long ago. Okay, okay, looks pretty good. I'm actually super happy with how it's coming along so far. Despite being a very quickly put together build, I didn't mention it because I did it a long time ago, but this wire runs to the coil and it's just spade clipped to the back of the coil. This is your kill switch. So what you have to do is you run this to a switch and then the second wire from the switch back to the engine somewhere. So you can just bolt it to one of the head bolts or one of the available unused bolt holes. Normally I run the kill switch up to the handlebar, but this is the only bar style kill switch I have, which are the really cheap, not good looking kill switches. And since this is supposed to be like a old school build, like this didn't exist back, this is just plastic. This doesn't match that. So I've got these two switches, which I don't even know where they came from. Well, they both came from that company, which I'm sure have long since been defunct, but this one's got a key, which is pretty cool. So it's got a really nice, and then this one's a pull switch, like a regular. And what I'm thinking of doing is installing it up on the fork here. I mean, these are legit old school, like they have brass and this one's just a bunch of pieces of laminated of wood. But the big selling point was the action of them. The um, I think this is what I wanna use because having a key would be pretty cool. So this one actually has four terminals on it. So I'll have to figure out which ones do which. If, if this will work, I'll use this one because I think it's just pretty cool having a little key. I had it marked up here. That circle there is where the key switch is gonna sit. So right in the center of the fork, it's away from everything. Super easy, we'll uh, figure this out. And then probably end up soldering them on because these eyelets are super tiny. Couple developments since last filming. Key switch is now wired in. The wires need to be tucked up out of the way, but I wait to do that last until I know where everything's gonna be. Um, but now you have a little key for the bike. You put it in there, turn it, and ignition's on. The main plan was gonna be use that Tecumseh S-shaped intake and the mechanical fuel injected till it's in carb thing. While the intake bolts directly on, that carb doesn't bolt to the intake close enough. The only way to do it would have to be drill out a lot of material out of both the intake and the carb to get the bolt holes to line up. And that's just too janky. I'm not willing to do that just to say the thing's fuel injected. But after that realization, I was digging through my parts bin stuff and I found this intake, which is specifically for a Raptor, which is the race version of this engine. Bolts directly on, has a little bung to feed this PCV into, and it bolts up to a standard round slide flange. I'm pretty sure this part costs double what the bike costs, but I already had it, it's on the shelf already, and I think I just bought it out of impulse. I didn't really have a plan for it. So here we are. We're gonna put that on there, put that on there, run a little pod filter. This is the exhaust I'm gonna use. I'm, it actually works really well. Since I'm gonna be making a seat, I can dictate if this exhaust is gonna to be too close or not. So we're gonna have a small seat, kind of forward more. I might pie cut this once just to get it to angle down a little bit because that's right at water entry level. The engine is in its home position and the wheel is in its final position so I can now figure out what chain we're gonna use. And being that we're doing a parts bin build, I have to go through my bag of scrap pieces of 35. Because as you know, every time you work with chain, you don't ever have the precise amount you need. So you always have extra or not enough. And I keep all the extra. So we'll find out how much we need, trim it to length and get that on there. This is the first time I've used SAE for really anything. And it's really sad how little SAE hardware I have in comparison to metric. Like I have, probably 30 quarter inch bolts to pick from, whereas I have hundreds of M6. So you probably notice over there, the brake cable is already installed. And then I now have the throttle done as well. Both of which required just modifications to the cables primarily. For the throttle, I wanted to reuse the original style throttle assembly, not the more modern one. The issue with that is there's no cables that really exist for this style throttle and also have a Makuni fitting on the other side. But right now it does you know, work like it's supposed to, and that's all I really care about. And it looks the part. So we'll get that slapped on there. I'll have to run the cable a little bit better instead of just hanging out like it is. 
So it's now got cruise control. So that's a pretty interesting feature we just added. I can promise you that this wasn't a pre-planned thing. I thought I already had at least part of a sheet of like eighth inch plywood that I was gonna use to make the base of the seat. I don't. And the only thing I have that isn't just metal is this, which is a plastic flagger stop sign. It's got, you know, stop and slow on it, you know, like the flagger that directs traffic. In any case, I don't even remember where I got this from and I've been waiting to use it on something. So here we are. I trimmed out a pattern I liked that fit with the parameters of things I need to work around. So trace that on there and then use this to trace out a piece of foam as well. Foam is undercut currently just so I have a little extra material. We're gonna trim this out with this jigsaw from the 50s and um, everything should be fine. Actually, does this thing even work? Let's just test it out, hold on. The prongs are kinda boogered up, but whatever. Oh, Jesus. That, well, it works. I didn't realize, I didn't realize it was on. That's great. Perfect. Number one safety channel. Some safety stuff, including safety flip-flops. Um, I guess I'll just get at it. Janky shit. Oh. The blade has pieced out. I think the blade just got too hot and then subsequently sticky. Um, oh, the nut cert's gone. The only problem is the nut cert's probably also black. So that's gonna be fun to find. Uh, well, I'll do, I'll pick back up here once I get this figured out. Well, that was a bit sketchy, but it's done. And luckily the safety flip-flops came in clutch. So seat pan is now made. It's all trimmed up, ready to go. Got some foil tape on the area where the exhaust is kind of close. I got the T-nuts pressed in. Normally these get hammered into wood, but as it turns out, they don't like being hammered into ABS plastic. So I actually just heated them up and then pressed them in. That way they actually like melted themselves a hole to sit in. Okay, so the piece is cured for the most part. It's still a little tacky, but that's fine. Some glue on the foam, line up the Alcantara so that it'll moderately stay in place at least long enough that I can staple around the perimeter just as a placeholder. And then I'm gonna actually glue down the material around the outside. That's pretty flat. Okay. Got glue on it, that's perfect. I didn't realize this, but the Chinese manufacturers are really cutting corners this nowadays. The carb doesn't even have a mixture screw, it only has an idle screw, which is crazy to me. They're like, no, we don't need that. A little bit different since you last saw it. Uh, different carb that has an actual mixture screw on it. Different gas tank is the one I had was a colander, as it turns out. Try to not drop it off the stand. Uh, not sure why it's revving up. There's the idle screw. Obviously not doing anything. That clutch is, uh, that clutch might be bad. I think it's a pretty good place to wrap up. It's more or less dialed in and it looks pretty dang good, especially for how cheap it was. And now it's one more mini bike completed and back on the road. I ballparked it though, cause uh, like the EC, branded intake that I used is no longer available, but I think it was about 50 bucks. So I just ballparked 50 bucks for that. Everything else was just stuff I had around already. So like the Alcantara, I used most of that for the van. I ballparked it to about $300 total to build this thing. So I think in the future I will try to do an actual one day build, but I think it's gonna be a lot of cutting corners and I'm not gonna be happy with the end result. I just wanna do it as a challenge. So yeah, next time I get another one of these frames that is cheap and worth saving, we'll go ahead and try that again. I'm always open to suggestions too, as far as like power plants, and setups and things like that, in particular styles of builds. This one just kind of cobbled itself together since it was a parts bin build. I think I already mentioned it, but if not, uh, all the parts and 
materials used should be in the description. If I missed anything, just let me know. With all that being said, thanks for watching and stay tuned. You're in my video. Oh. Yes, thank you. Oh, it's not a good place for God damn it. Oh, that whole thing was out of focus. Get the fuck out! Holy shit! It's the engine. Fuck you! I did! God damn it! That bolt is just gone now. Anyways, focus. Piece of shit. I don't understand how anyone can get good audio while filming outside, but I'm not one of those people. There really is no filming outside quietly. Uh, how am I gonna do this actually? Do I just jankly hold it over the edge? I hate that solution. I wasn't recording any of that. That's fantastic.